Hello, everybody! The new season of Queer Eye has made me cry like 12 times. Lauv came out with four songs in the span of 24 hours. I had gluten free lasagna for lunch. Life is beautiful. I do I do this? Pick you up and put you down and put you through this. Started off as a good thing, shut thing you held back, but I know. Welcome to my channel if you are new and if you are not welcome back my name is Maya and today we will be discussing why literature is for losers or so the kids say we're going to discuss why I think literature and reading is considered an uncool hobby why that is incorrect and whether or not I think the general perception of reading and book loving is going to change in the future. Spoiler alert, I still think it's going to be relatively uncool in 30 years, but there's a little more to the story. This will all, of course, be coming from a high schooler's perspective. Please take that into account. That being said, let's go. The first reason, ha ha ha, the first reason I think that reading is not super popular and is kind of regarded as a nerdy, geeky, losery hobby, losery, losery, is because it is solitary. People are social creatures, whether on an individual level that's true, I do not know. I personally am an introvert, but as a whole, the human species is reliant on other humans, you know? We, we really thrive on connection for the most part, and because of that, a lot of the time, really popular hobbies and activities revolve around teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work, or so my school's volleyball promo shirts say. Reading, however, is a very solitary hobby for the most part. You're not really engaging or interacting with other people when you're reading a book home alone or at school during lunch. You're kind of off by yourself in your own world uh, with your own imagination. <laughs> which is awesome, but it doesn't really quite fit into the human norm of being really social and connected. Another reason I think that reading is considered uncool is because it does not deliver instant gratification, which is what much of our culture these days revolves around. Instant gratification is the idea that you do not have to wait or put in too much effort or time to reap your results. Instagram, you take a picture, maybe you slap a filter on there, you click post, and immediately the likes start pouring in. Immediately, you have instant validation and thus instant gratification. This same idea applies to topics like fast food. Uh, it's quick and it tastes amazing and it's cheap. It's, it's instant gratification. It applies to TV shows. That's why they're so bingeable. Uh, it applies to movies. You can just skip to your favorite part. You don't really have to be focused on the whole thing. It's kind of been a really instilled aspect in our culture for several years. Reading does not provide that sense of instant gratification. Uh, Beth died. <laughs> Unless you are Bill Gates and you read 150 pages per hour. Bill Gates, leave your secrets down below. Reading takes time for most, if not all, people. It's an actual effort. You have to set aside time in your day to make space for it, and it does require you to think. Not that TV and movies don't. I'm actually of the opinion that television and film are incredible media to portray stories with, but books, you have to you have to put in a little more brain power, you know what I'm saying? If you've had a long day at work, it's going to be easier to watch Bambi, no, you're gonna cry, to watch Tang than it is to sit down and really get invested in a new story. Not only does reading take quite a bit of your time, but it takes a while often to develop a story to a point where you are validated or gratified in your experience. Often the beginnings of books aren't that great, which kind of sucks for the books, because that means people give up on them. The third and final reason I think reading is considered unpopular is because of the way it is taught in schools. In school, reading and English class in general is very much about repetition. If you can derive what the, the, the vast majority of people or the curriculum wants you to derive from a piece of text, you are doing it right. Now my class, you will learn to think for yourselves again. You will learn to savor words and language. No matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world.
If your opinion on a certain poem or a certain story, the themes, the morals, if that strays infinitesimally, you will not be rewarded for your independent and critical thinking. English class should be about the exploration of not only language, but also of storytelling. And if we are confining storytelling to one interpretation, when everyone will experience a book, a story, a novel, a movie, a TV show, a piece of music, anything. You're confining people and you're restricting them and restriction means no freedom and no freedom means discomfort and then people get sad, you know? I would like to think that school encourages kids to think differently and to learn how they as individuals think and process new information. It happens to be a lot about conformity. If you don't think in the way everyone else thinks, you're gonna have a harder time. To sum that up, the reasons reading is not cool. Number one, it's a solitary activity. Number two, what was number two? It doesn't provide instant gratification. And number three, our school systems set us up for failure in our exploration of literature because they do not develop our ideas of critical thinking and often they tell kids that their interpretation of a story is incorrect when in fact it's just individual and unique to them. On to why reading should be considered cool. A. Reading expands your world view. Whether you're reading stories about the real world, about planet earth and animals and, and uh, genetic uh, biomes, or you're reading about fictional worlds with hobbits and and wizards and and uh, demigods, you're going to be expanding your horizons because you will undoubtedly irrefutably read something that you are not familiar with. Everything you read will be from someone's different perspective. Because everyone has a life so full and so rich, their stories will be unique in that fullness and that richness. Thus, your worldview, whether that be of a culture, of a particular landscape, of a people, of a singular person, it will expand. This moves me to point B, which is that you will develop more empathy as a reader. I have a few videos on this. If you're interested and I decide to be a good YouTuber today, they will be linked above. Empathy versus sympathy, okay? Sympathy is when you feel bad for someone, right? You see that they're sad and you feel sorry that they feel sad, which is great. It's good to feel sorry when people are sad. I think that is a humane response. Empathy, on the other hand, is to understand to a point what that person is going through. You don't have to have experienced the same traumas or hardships, but you realize that you've suffered from similar emotions and circumstances. Thus, you're able to relate to that person from that place of shared experience or emotion. When you are trotting along in another character's mind in a book, whether that character was a real person or someone made up at a train station in England, you will learn about how other people see the world. Because as a character experiences something, you'll feel as though you are experiencing it too. And that's a really beautiful, powerful part of literature that I feel like a lot of people don't consider. Last but not least, I think that literature and reading should be considered cool because they will allow you to think critically about the real world around you. For example, of course, Harry Potter is in a precarious situation right now due to everything going on with JK Rowling and transphobia. But let's, let's take it back several years when I knew nothing of the author and only of her work. I'm six, right? I'm reading Harry Potter with my dad. It is 7.30. I am up past bedtime and I am drinking a cup of steaming tea. These books, the characters and their individual experiences taught me so much about the real world around me. I learned about acceptance and tolerance and fighting with love and not hatred. I learned about the power of friendship, the love between pets, that family doesn't have to be biological, that you choose the people you surround yourself with and that can lead you in so many different directions. I learned that people are capable of change from those stories. I learned the value of loyalty, of ambition, of bravery, of creativity, all from a collection of seven books, which is just incredible. I was then able to take what I had learned from literature, apply it to my own life, and think critically. The most relevant example I can think of today is the topic of anti-racism. You know what? I'm gonna go back to Harry Potter. I know that there are a lot of racial issues within Harry Potter, but the blood status in Harry Potter was meant to reflect the race issues in our world today. And that is described in the book as completely unjust, unright, and unfair. No one asked your opinion. You filthy little mud blood. She'll pay for that one, Malfoy. Eat slugs! 
Hermione Granger is a mudblood. It's a very derogatory term for someone who is of muggle descent. However, she is one of the most powerful and intelligent witches, not only at Hogwarts, but in the entirety of the magical community. Dealing with a similar topic in a fictional world has allowed me to learn more about the problems in my real world, considering race. Racism has been deeply embedded in all of us because of social programming, and it's something we have to work together actively to dismantle. I think it's really, really cool that some Calibri font can change the world. All right, now for the last part of this video, do I ever think reading will be considered cool? No. No, I do not. That said, allow me to elaborate. I was thinking about scrunchies. I was thinking about how things that were cool in the past become disregarded, and then 20 years later they'll pop up again and be incredibly, incredibly popular. Just the entirety of the 80s aesthetic, really. The bright colors, high-waisted jeans, scrunchies, chunky shoes, you know? No, not the hair. Not the hair. The hair is much more 70s. So when I think about the sort of 20-year cycle, as I like to refer to it, I think that will happen with books. I think as ebooks and audiobooks become more popular and our media is mostly in the form of film, in television, I think people will feel a sense of nostalgia for the classic hardback paper book. Another way I think reading could become more popular and less uncool is if our schools made a focus and intentionally worked towards showing more diverse stories that encapsulate the majority of people's experiences. It's impossible to capture a human experience because every human has a different experience. Hi, my name is John Green and we need diverse books. I think we need diverse books because we need to reflect the reality of our communities and that reality is a very diverse one. One of the magical things about reading to me is that it helps me to imagine the life outside of myself. I believe that if reading develops a more diverse voice, it can create a sense of community. I think book clubs could then form and be more interesting because it would be different people from different backgrounds discussing a shared idea or feeling or topic, and I think that would be a really powerful thing. I think if we can make reading much more of a group activity, it will become more popular. That said, I do not see reading becoming less uncool in the future because it's considered an uncool hobby and thus people do not promote it or project it or avidly tell people about it. I do hope that more people will read. I know there have been some studies that show that people in my generation and millennials are reading more and that's really encouraging to me. I think reading has a lot of power and I believe that it is something that could play a huge role in changing our world for the better and helping inspire people and opening up hearts and minds. And that is really the true power to me of the written word or the spoken word or the acted word or the sung word or the, you know, you know, any form of art really, I think has the power to deliver a message of love and hope. Thank you so much for watching today, everyone. I hope you were made to reconsider just a little bit whether or not reading is truly uncool. If you remained unconvinced, that's okay. Let me know why in the comments below. I'd love to have a conversation with you all about it. I will see you all next time. I believe that will be Saturday. And until then, bye-bye.